sound speeds in every direction and provided that your microphone is close enough to the sound source you're wanting to record you shouldn't have a problem getting a good level out of it provided you understand certain things about the microphone like its polar pattern there's a lot of videos online that talk about microphone polar patterns so i'm not going to be approaching this the same way most youtube channels do no i'm going to be tackling this my own way you've heard me say it many times in the past but i'll say it again sound is simply vibration and all a microphone is is something that converts vibration into electrical current here is a very simple analogy that will explain in the simplest possible terms how a dynamic microphone works. A dynamic microphone is pressure operated, meaning that there is pressure that creates the electrical current. So imagine a bowl, and then if you put a balloon over the surface of that bowl, any vibration that hits that balloon will basically change the air pressure on the inside of the bowl, therefore creating an electrical current out of the sound vibration. A condenser microphone is not a pressure operated microphone, it's what's referred to as a pressure gradient microphone and it's quite a bit more complex to explain than a pressure operated microphone but again here in the simplest possible way that i can possibly think of to explain it let me tackle it imagine a plate and stretch across the surface of that a balloon between the two apply a current that comes from your phantom power now any vibration that hits the surface of that balloon is going to change the current traveling between the two surfaces and according to the waves that hit that diaphragm it is creating an electrical current that outputs accordingly many youtube channels out there don't even bother explaining ribbon microphones but i'm going to and again explain in the simplest possible manner imagine two points and between them is a very thin ribbon. Any sound vibration that comes in from this side of the ribbon is going to create a sound wave that first goes through a crest, then a trough. Any sound waves that come in and hit the other side of the ribbon is going to create a trough first, then a crest. Therefore, sound that comes in from this direction is in phase, and sound that comes in from this way is inverted phase. That will come into play because many ribbon microphones are bipolar. They have two different globes, the positive globe and the negative globe, and you got to know how to play it in order to properly use one. In terms of sensitivity, the ribbon microphone is the most sensitive between the three microphones we've discussed because it is simply a metal ribbon extended between two electrodes that basically produce your output of sound. Now, if that ribbon is jerked around too much, it can dislodge from one of the two electrodes, rendering it completely useless. If you put phantom power or even, yikes, T power through it, that can also damage the microphone. So it is extremely sensitive, therefore it is also sensitive to vibration. The next most sensitive microphone is the condenser microphone because the balloon is very sensitive to vibration and any vibration that it feels is going to affect the output of current. Because of the nature of a dynamic microphone being a pressure operated microphone, it is very resilient to high sound pressure levels. As a matter of fact, I've done a video about that. Now, if we wanted to take apart a dynamic microphone, and believe me, I'm only going to be taking apart a dynamic, and on that note, it's going to be the EV635A, then <laughs> we're going to do that now together so that I could show you on the inside that my analogy of a drum is not that far off. First of all, we're going to remove the loose screen. Then the next layer you have in there is kind of a, a mesh, which is also metal. And then you have a layer of kind of a thin material that also acts as a wind buffer, followed by this little metal piece. And then on the inside, you have a nice little drum right there. That's why I said it kind of works as an analogy, because this right here is going to be, I mean, here I am pressing this thing. It's not going to damage this microphone. As a matter of fact, this is not going to damage this microphone. It is a very, very resilient microphone. This microphone, as a matter of fact, is nicknamed the hammer for a reason. Do I have any regrets for just nailing this thing? Not one. A dynamic omnidirectional microphone is designed to pick up sound in three-dimensional space around the microphone evenly, meaning that one foot off the microphone vertically is supposed to sound the same as one foot off the microphone this direction, or one foot off the microphone in this direction, or one foot off the microphone even in this direction, even though in the real world it is not exactly linear. So now we know what an omnidirectional pattern looks like, and we know what a binaural pattern looks like. What happens if you overlay the two on top of each other? you basically have two microphones with let's say one sensitivity each 
the positive globe of the binaural microphone is going to expand the reach of the omnidirectional microphone by sensitivity of two because basically they're both picking up in that direction. And the negative globe, which is basically out of phase to the omnidirectional pattern, is going to create a cancellation effect off the rear part, creating a cardioid pattern. Now, if you play with the balance between the positive globe and the negative globe on a binaural microphone and change the ratio from 50 to 50 to, let's say, 70 and 30, then what you're going to get is less cancellation on the rear globe, and you're going to get more reach out of the positive lobe. And this is where little patterns like hypercardioid and supercardioid come from. As for a shotgun microphone, it is what's referred to as a low bar pattern, meaning that you basically take a microphone element and you stick it inside of an interference tube. And to explain an interference tube, imagine that your ear is the microphone element and a paper towel roll is an interference tube. You're going to hear in a straight line very, very well, even though it's going to sound really weird, right? That is basically the concept of an interference tube. But on a shotgun microphone, there are these little slits in there. And what the slits do is if you added slits, for example, in the paper towel roll, you're going to be hearing sounds coming in just a little bit through those slits. That's going to make it sound a little bit fuller and not quite so thin while you're still getting that directionality. The sound of a shotgun microphone is engineered to be a certain way, and that's all dictated by the quality of the actual element itself and the shape and thickness and how many slits there are in that interference tube. And do they go all the way around? Are they only in one side or two sides? How far are they spaced apart? How thick is the interference tube? What is it made of? All these different factors are going to affect the way that microphone sounds. According to the pattern, of the microphone, it is going to be more or less sensitive to sound coming in from different angles. Any sound that comes into the least sensitive area of that microphone should be the least desirable sounds, like noises that you don't want to have in your recording. Like, for example, an air conditioning system you cannot shut off. That is also considered and referred to as the null part of that microphone pattern. If you're working as a boom operator in the motion picture industry, then you want to point the sensitive part of that microphone at whatever sound source you're trying to record, be it a voice or somebody clicking on a keyboard, whatever it happens to be. And you want the least desirable sound to be in the null part of that microphone. The same thing goes with a voiceover artist and using a large diaphragm condenser microphone, for example. Any sound that is undesired, like let's say if you want to leave the air conditioner on in your house while you're recording your podcast, then even though that's less desirable, it has a better chance of not being picked up if you put that sound in the null part of your microphone. If you look at the polar pattern chart of a microphone, you'll see that there are many different lines drawn around the microphone itself. And those correspond to frequencies that that microphone can hear. And if you look closer, you'll usually recognize them to be octaves because every time you double a frequency, it goes up an octave. Anytime you cut a frequency in half, then it goes down an octave. So for example, 1000 hertz to 2000 hertz is one octave. 2000 hertz to 4000 hertz is another octave. 1000 hertz to 500 hertz it drops an octave and so forth. So by looking at that microphone pattern, you are going to be able to see where it is most sensitive amongst all frequencies. To get the very best results out of a microphone, you need to look at that polar pattern chart and determine which direction is most sensitive to all frequencies and point that direction at whatever sound source you care about. And then look at the polar pattern chart and determine which direction is the least sensitive amongst all frequencies and point that at the sound that you care least about. It's one thing to look at a microphone specification sheet and it's a completely separate thing to listen to it itself. Even amongst the most pristine microphone manufacturers, there are slight deviations that happen in the microphone manufacturing process. It could be plus or minus 2 dB amongst 100 hertz on one microphone and amongst 1000 hertz on a separate microphone. That's one of the reasons why sometimes microphones are sold in matching pairs. It's not that they were manufactured to to actually be matching, it's more that they were compared amongst all the different microphones that might have come out of a certain batch, and they say, well, these two sound the most similar, therefore they're a matching pair. So while recording sound is a lot of fun, it can also be very challenging, which is why it's helpful to have an understanding of things like which kinds of microphones are more sensitive than others, and what is the polar pattern of the microphones that you enjoy using the most. These are all very, very important things that will affect your recording, so keep them very close in mind because that's a lot of sound advice.
Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.